which I guess is fine. Okay, go ahead. When you guys are ready. Okay, so on this one versus one debate, we want to do something light, so we're going to talk about a film that he really likes and one that I think is appalling, and that is 2014's Interstellar. Uh, it is a critically acclaimed film. It has won an Oscar and all that stuff, but I think the film is boring, slow, and overrated, and it does nothing to advance storytelling or visual effects. It simply wastes the viewer's time and affects to try to be smarter than it is, and I would like to quote a few... Uh, critics who agree with me. So James Rachi of IndieWire says, this is like some modern variation of Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, and that is not a way you should make your film. The Guardian called it Nolan's biggest spectacle and biggest disappointment. And in an article from The Hollywood Reporter uh, by author Stephen Dalton, he says, the big statement that Nolan takes almost three hours to deliver is almost too silly for words without getting into spoilers. The take-home revelation seems to be that human love is stronger than any force than time or gravity, which is a pretty stupid statement that a movie should make. Coming from a film that's supposed to be very scientific, it shouldn't say that love is stronger than anything else. So I think this film, though it looks beautiful, is not as good as people say it is, and it lacks a lot of quality in a lot of aspects. So I'm going to be talking about why I think Interstellar is such a great movie, which it is. First of all, Interstellar is a critically acclaimed film, and it, it shocked the movie industry with its beautiful visual animations and one of the best movie soundtracks, which was uh, nominated for an Oscar, you know, directed by Hans Zimmer, which, is, which was a producer for Interstellar and all big, high-budget movies. So I think the movie really helped us, helped us see like, a different aspect of space and the world and just life in general. And first of all, the movie received an 8.6 score out of 10 on IMDb, so you can't say the movie's bad if IMDb is some strict critics rating this movie, and it did win an Oscar for uh, the best achievement in visual effects. So, and on later points, I'll be just talking about how the movie's so great and how you're going to lose this debate. Okay. <coughs> okay. So for my first argument is the one thing I want to bring up is about Christopher Nolan as a filmmaker. Christopher Nolan is considered a genius in terms of filmmaking and cinematography, and he is a genius. He tries to develop new and creative visuals with his storytelling, just look at Inception, just look at Memento, just look at what he did in Dunkirk this year. Although when it was this film, he didn't do anything groundbreaking. When you look at the visuals he did make, they are homages to older films, like 2001, A Space Odyssey, which I talked about earlier. A lot of the visuals are played out exactly like they are in 2001, and even Fantastic Voyage, Close Encounters of the Third Time, and Armageddon. And it's, it shows that he didn't really try in this film to do anything groundbreaking like he does in his other films. And he just took, he just made an homage to these older space exploration films that did it better than he did. So another point I want to bring up is the science, which I did touch upon earlier. It's, there is real life science in this, and you can see it explained through the black holes and the time manipulation when you're inside the black hole, and that has been explained throughout it. But when it comes to the third act of this movie, it does something to undercut the whole scientific credibility that it had leading up to that point, and that is where the character of Cooper enters the fifth dimension. And this is where the love is stronger than anything comes into play, because he goes into the fifth dimension to find his daughter in the past talking to himself in there, and when you're t based in a movie that's completely in scientific facts, and it's working up until that point, and I will say it is working up until this point. You can't undercut everything you just led up to with this random fact that he enters the fifth dimension and he finds something of his daughter and it proves that love is stronger than science. That is a stupid fa fact to bring up, and you'll, you know it too, like the whole movie is <laughs> love is stronger than science, that's the whole point, so. Save for when the open debate, okay, save for okay. the open debate. Okay, so. <laughs> Another point is that I find this movie's use of Matt Damon very upsetting. Now, part of, the story, <laughs> part of the story is involving finding his character when his crew gets lost. And it's, it's a good part of the story. It takes away from the central plot, but it doesn't do anything with him. It, his whole storyline doesn't involve the rest of the main story. And what you will say later, which I know you will, is something about the love. His story is useless when it comes to the <coughs> overall narrative, and it just does nothing for that. When you've got an actor like Matt Damon, and you want to surprise your audience by having him show up in the middle of your movie. 
then do something more of him than is having him show up and then ultimately killing off the character in a very pretentious way where he forgets to close an airlock. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. So my final point is that this film is it's just boring. Like the film clocks in at just under three hours. In that time, it relies heavily on the visuals. And not to mention, at best, the plot is mediocre. Okay, so I kind of summed up the plot of the movie. It's a farmer who was once a science engineer is asked by a secret government group to pilot a spaceship in order to find new and habitable life. That is a cliche trope we see in other science fiction films, and it's nothing inventive or new that we've seen from Christopher Nolan, and it's just, it's just a lazy story idea. Okay. Okay, so my four points. Well, for what, what most people think Interstellar is a movie about, is about traveling through, through space trying to save the world, but in reality... Interstellar focuses on two aspects. It's, yeah, Christopher Nolan is trying, not Chris, I mean, fucking McConaughey is trying to <laughs> save the world, but at the same time, it's a father-daughter relationship. And a direct quote from the movie is, uh, so this was when uh, Matthew McConaughey was traveling through space and he was going to, towards the wormhole and he's traveling through the universe and he's, he's in his like space pod sleeping and time and space is different than time on Earth. So his daughter would send, didn't even send him all these voice recordings and like, oh, how are you doing, Dad? Because he would get it, whatever, 20 years later. So a direct quote from the movie is, I never made one of these when you were still responding because I was so mad at you for leaving. And then you went out, and then you went quiet. It felt like I should live with that decision, and I have. But today is my birthday, and it's a special one because you told me, you told me once when you come back, we might be the same age. And today, I am the same age you were when you left. And I think that scene really would, anybody would just tear up in the theaters. And I know all my friends listened to that scene when we watched the movie probably like eight times together. And oh, that scene is really changing, I think. It really brings a gap between the father-daughter relationship and there's two certain aspects that, yes, he needs to save the world, but his daughter is now the same age as him. And I think no movie has really showed that big bond between a father and daughter so much that the vastness of whatever 50 years he is now the same age as his daughter, it really, it's, it's something else. So my second point is obviously Interstellar's visuals, and it won the Oscar for Best Achievement in Visual Effects, and there was a scene in the movie at the end where they went through a black hole. Has any other movie showed a scene and what the producers and all the f physicists all perceived what